Hi, now I'm going to show you how I do this demonstration movies. The camera I put on a bookshelf next to the wall, and that just films the overview when I speak and talk and demonstrate things like this. You, you hear it's a quite noisy environment here, so to, to cancel out the sound, sound you need a better microphone. So I actually have placed here behind the column that you can't see a better microphone that picks up my voice. If I don't use the microphone, you will hear the lots of room noise and uh, my voice will be very unclear. And uh, that can be very, very hard to do something in, in, in a later stage and you, you can't process that way. So you need a good so now I'm going to copy over all the files. The next thing would be to go into Audacity, a free audio editing software. And we do that and edit all the sound that we recorded with this microphone. What we are looking for is to reduce the background noise and then we will normalize each, each wave file so it will have a constant amplitude of all the clips. That will make the editing later in Camtasia Studio more easy. Here you can see I opened Audacity, the audio editing software. Now we're going to open one of the audio files that were recorded from the microphone. So here we have the first sound recording. So here I stand in another. So here I stand in another. What I'm doing here is that I'm select a small piece of uh, space in the WAV file that only contains the noise. Then I use that as a profile for noise reduction. So now I remove the noise from the forest recording. Let's listen to it again now. So here I stand in another. In a, yeah, much lesser noise now, noise now. We do want to keep some part of the noise left because that will give some atmosphere to, to the video. If you reduce everything, then it will sound unnatural. Now we will normalize this, so the, the file will have the same amplitude as every other file that we don't use. So that's it. So now I have already loaded in all the movies and sound files into Camtasia. I start a new project by setting the canvas size to 720p like so and that's because my camera films are 1080p and then I have a little more of the edges that I can crop off and, and still not lose any resolution. So here you can see the file and, uh, and here is the beginning of my session. You can also see down here that this white pattern here, that's the sound level that's been recorded by the microphone in the camera. But we will not use that, we will use the external audio that comes from the from the microphone that I hidden here behind the stage, right? But first we separate this video. Now we have the sound file on a separate track here. Then I check the sound recording. Now you can see I, I recorded it at 9.58 a.m. So then there should be a similar recording file. So here I have 9.59. So this should be the same track then, right? If we go to our highest zoom in level here, the idea is to match these patterns so they line across vertically. Then we will have synced audio to the video. Let's look at the image here while we play it. I turn off the camera microphone and we listen to the, to the recording microphone that's behind the microscope. I want to show you how I do these movies. What you can see here is that I stand in a quite noisy room where the, inst the instrument exists. Yeah, that that I'm seems nice, to. right? You can check also with the, with the ca camera audio also and see how much better the noise from the microphone is. You see, after noise processing, the recording microphone is much better. You get, get much clearer voices. So then we have matched the audio to the first video clip. Now we're going to cut off all the all the bad things I spoke and only have to keep the real important stuff. And then we go and put up some more clips. So here I think the bit would be nice to make the cut. Here I start to talk talk the demo. Right? 
And uh, we're going to cut this here. And then we want to cut audio and video at the same time. I look in the picture and see, do I have eye contact? Yeah, here I have eye contact. I choose to cut everything here, split all the playhead. Everything here, that's just crap, so we remove that. And then we put this in the beginning, and the real microphone audio that I want to keep, I put in the bottom line here. This one we only have as reference. What we want now is to crop the image a little bit. We don't want to have all this extra spacing around. That is just disturbing. So let's crop it. Perhaps something like that. And then we magnify this. This is the, where the extra pixels of 1080p comes handy. Like so. So here it is a problem. Here I, I, I say the wrong thing and I need to do this again. But then I only have one movie shot here. So in order to cut this and make it look nice, we're going to recrop the image. So we cut the video here, and then during this session, we recrop the image. So it looks like a zoomed in view when I'm talking. Like so. And then, now we listen. I'm a better microphone that picks up my voice. If I don't use the microphone, we hear lots of room noise and uh, my voice will be very unclear. And, uh, that can be very, very hard to do something in, in, in a later stage and you can't process that way. So you need a good microphone. The microphone I use is sort of a semi-pro microphone. It's called a Zoom H2N model. Uh, then you have a USB connection to transfer the, uh, the voice recordings to the computer. It's portable, so during the recording it stores everything at a memory card. So it's a very neat microphone. If you're going around in the room, it can be very neat to put the microphone in your pocket. That is the second best alternative, because it can make some noise in the shirt when you move around. It will be even more better if you have this uh, mic, mic that you put here, but I don't have that, and I sort of want to keep the technology at its lowest level. But this can be very useful. I mean, if you just stand like this, you can still talk and you hear, you hear me very clearly and I can p point and discuss things more freely. Another smart thing is that when you talk like this you need to make some cut things. You, you need to say something again, you stumble or something and then you need to make a cut. Then it's good to have some close-up image of the thing that you discuss. So what you can do then is you you point at things like this, and it's very easy if you if you can't see the mouth when you speak. For example, if you're turning downwards and point at things, that feels more natural. And then you can point like this, and then you can change the sound afterwards if that's needed. Otherwise, if you see the mouth when I talk, then you just need to retake the whole video. It's always good to have a second camera, and I use my, uh, my uh, tablet here. This tablet has a quite decent camera also, and it can be used as a second camera as well. And then you can cut in the, as the second camera view and just make one shooting of the scene. So the idea is to hide this camera so you don't see it in the picture of the other camera. So I can, for example, place it back here. So now I just put the second camera behind here, so you can't barely see it. But when I do and discuss something like this holder, for example, I will have a second close-up view of that camera. And I only do one shooting. And this can be very neat. As my main camera, I just use my phone. This is my Samsung Galaxy Note 3. It has a very nice uh, HD camera, and it shoots very nice videos. And I have this very nice stand. With the stand you can get you can put the camera anywhere and with these ones you can put them exactly anywhere you like. This is this support is very useful for these kind of demonstration videos. You see the mic here is visible in the picture. That one we we will crop up later when we do this video. If you need to draw something to make it more easy understandable, then it's very useful to make use some kind of digital equipment. I use my, my Samsung Galaxy Note Pro tablet here. This one has this very neat pen that you can draw with. And then I use a screen recording software like this. Then this will record everything that happens on screen. So then I just open as whatever thing you like. And for this example I open this notebook application. 
So now everything is recorded here. So if I draw something here, that will be recorded into a movie that I later can put into the real complete movie that you see now. And here you can easily visualize something that you want to emphasize. I don't know what it, this will be, but I, th I think it's, qu it's quite obvious that you get happy when you do this. So, that's another thing to make something more clear. So, that's it how you can use the tablet. It's always nice to take some quick images also of some details of the thing that you demonstrate. So here I just use my tablet to take the picture just because you, my other camera is doing the filming now. Like this. Let's say I want to discuss this the texture. Then it can be, have two reasons to take a picture of it. Like so. One pitch thing is that if you need to retake and need to make a new voice recording or something because it was unclear what you said, then you can show this picture and it will look natural when you change clips. Otherwise, you need to retake the whole set. The other thing is the camera, a still, still image camera the image, is very detailed. It's, you can easily emphasize the details and discuss things around it. So the the demonstration will be more complete to have some kind of image that you show up as well. If you have a movie monitor like this that you want to record something on screen, if there's the old ones, cathode ray tubes, the main problem with those are they they will flicker when you when you record them. There are software that can adjust for this, but it will never be very nice. A quick way is to is to shoot at 15 frames per second. Choose some smaller frame rate. That reduces the flicker a little bit. Another thing to think for when you shoot is that if you sh if you have a close up on the screen, then you will get more area patterns. So it's better to lose some detail by standing back and get a more more soft picture than having this warrior pattern that destroys sort of everything for you. It can also be very nice to change the camera view. You, you, you move the camera and put it on somewhere else and then you can either retake the shot so you can cut in a, a second view or you can just talk of something else and just, just change the view. This makes the video more dynamic and li lifeful. Now you see I have put the microphone beneath the camera so you don't see it. But my second camera can see it, so you can show. It. So I show it for you now. If you need to make a choice between sound and video, choose sound in the first place. If you can't hear what you're saying, then there's no no meaning having good image. But if you have good sound and bad image, that can sometimes actually work. It's better to put in still images instead of movie and have a good speaker voice attached to it. That will also make very nice movies. One very important thing when you do this video recording is that when you start your video recording, look into the camera and also wait a few seconds. So stand like this, one, two, three, and then you start talking. That will make the video editing and cutting much, much more easy. And if you have problem having eye contact with your video recorder, then you can do a very simple thing, like this, and make a smile. And put that up behind the camera. Then you have something that you more easy can talk to. I mean, you don't need to make a drawing, you can use some uh, toy or something. But uh, this is very helpful if you are unexperienced talking to a camera. When you're ready with your movie recorder, I just take my phone like this and then you need to transfer the, the movies over to the, to the computer. I just use this OTG adapter that you can connect to the phone and then you connect it to a USB memory like this. It's nice to have a fast USB memory also. The, the file size can be quite large. Connect it like this and then you can just uh, copy over the files. Here I have made all the 
movie recordings for today's demo. Like so. Then you can easily transfer them to the computer in a later stage. That's it. Now I showed you some demonstration about how I make demonstration movies. Please drop a comment below and uh, tell me how, how you do and uh, if you succeed and if you use something of the technique that I've used. See you.